versus having it on its side, well, all you gotta do is lift your arm, close it, and you're back in the game. All right, here we go. Corporal's Corner midweek video number 19. Which old school kit do I prefer? The LBV or LBE? All right, time for Corporal's Corner midweek video, I think number 19, I believe it's number 19. Took a few weeks off and I explained all this in my Sunday video drop. I'm 100% transparent. I explain what I'm doing, I explain where I'm filming, I explain where my channel's headed, and I explain where I'm gonna be at. For the most part, people understand that. Some still can't follow a video and decide to make their own videos chock full of misinformation. So I don't know how much clearer I can be. I'm a 1099 contractor, I always have been. I've never been an employee and I'm going to be a contractor for the rest of my life. I do contract jobs, okay? Right now, I'm self-employed. I'm doing my business at home. I'm also filming videos on the side. So I am busy seven days a week, and I run seven days a week, and I'm gonna continue running seven days a week to get where I need to be. Um, so those that keep watching, I appreciate it. So I'm gonna bring back the midweek videos, and we're gonna kick this off with showing you two different pieces of kit, two different pieces of gear. One's the old school LBE, and one's the LBV. Now, I said old school. They're both technically old school, and we'll get into that right now. Um, let's kick this off with the first system, I guess you could say, load-bearing equipment, the 1970s through 1997-ish LBE. So those that followed my videos over the years, you've watched me use this thing relentlessly. I'm sold on it, 100% sold. Why? Because it's old school gear that in my opinion, if it's not broke, you don't need to fix it, okay? Now I'm not gonna get too involved in the history of this. I have several videos on that. Just type in there, Corporal's Corner, Military Harness, or Old School Gear, it's gonna pop up right there, okay? This is a later version, a late 1990s version of what they created Right around World War II, there's been different variations of this all the way through Vietnam. In fact, it was made famous in Vietnam, and then it just went from cotton canvas to the nylon that you see today. Now, the main point of this system was it was an individual system. That way you could drop your pack, still have everything you need to go out. You have all your ammo, your compass, you have a pouch in the back here. Throw a poncho in there, add a poncho liner, otherwise known as a whoopee, and a meal, wherever you need for that day, change of socks, etc. You can go out on your patrol. Now, I enjoy this harness setup because if you think about it, a lot of people like haversacks, okay? If you look here, the butt pack is basically the same size as the haversack. But instead of it being slung on my side, giving weight distribution on one side of my body, the harness actually works in the same manner. It will distribute the weight around your body, okay? Now, the beauty of this system and why it lasted so long, in my opinion, is that all of these components are interchangeable. If you have an equipment failure, say on one of your mag pouches, the plastic clip breaks, I can dump this piece and replace it, okay? And I can also adjust it to my body. If I have a fragmentation vest on, I can open this up or get a belt extender. That way it can go around me. Or I wanna wear a jacket or a poncho, I can actually an increase or decrease the size of the belt, raise or lower the suspenders, and adjust it to whatever gear I'm carrying, okay? Prior to that, you couldn't do that kind of thing. And so that's what made this unique. There's only really one way to wear this. You want the belt buckle right around your navel. You don't want it along your waist. You don't want it down here for several reasons. One, if you're wearing some other type of belt, it's gonna interfere with that or rub. Second, so you have a holster on over here, you're not gonna be able to get to it with all this crap in the way, or even a knife on your belt, it can now hang right here. Most importantly are your ammo pouches. You see a lot of people with them sitting right here in the front. Now when I see that, it usually tells me that person has not been in the military or even used this system. Checking out the length of these pouches, if you place it in front here and you try to run, you're gonna hit that all day. It's gonna impede with what you're doing. 
Now, another reason why you want the ammo pouches on the side like this versus in the front is if you have a rifle and you need to reload your weapon or simply low crawling to a different position. It's uncomfortable. And then to reload, you're gonna have to roll to your side like this to get that actual magazine out of there. Versus having it on its side, well, all you gotta do is lift your arm, close it, and you're back in the game. So there's thought process that goes behind this and why you carry the gear a certain way. Now we've already talked about having it around your navel, having these slightly to the side like this, so that way it won't impede your knees if you have to run somewhere or get in the prone position. Now the same thing goes for the butt pack. You want this in the lumbar region of your lower back. You don't want it bouncing off of your butt. Okay, you don't want it hanging off of your butt. Again, when you run, you don't want the thing to flop around. You want a nice tight fit, equal distance and distributed all the way around. So again, there's thought process behind why they made what they did and why it lasted for so long. And I can go out for a day hike, carry something like this and have all my gear versus having a backpack. Now, that's the question, my harness or a backpack? It depends on the situation. And here's why. If it's 100 degrees outside, 80% humidity, I'll carry something like this all day, every day, because my back is exposed and I can vent. Versus having a sweaty backpack covering my entire back, and you're dripping in sweat, just lugging the thing all over town. So what you're looking at right here is the first version of the M1988 LBV or load bearing vest. Now, 1988, what does that mean? It means it came out in 1988. Now, different branches of the service, this filtered down faster. Special Forces units most likely got it first. In my time in the Marine Corps, we didn't even see this until late 1997, early 1998. We came back from Okinawa, Japan in 97, and we, we were reissued gear and we're like, the hell is this you know that's how it worked that's how late it took for us to get this now two versions of this actually exist we'll talk about that here in a minute this is the first one load bearing vest because it's a vest the belt system the butt pack the canteens were all from the lbe the only thing that they gave to us was the vest right here the vest is an individual piece and it is one solid unit everything you see here is attached minus the belt system now, like I already said, we didn't see this till the end of 1997, beginning of 1998. And for us, we had to unlearn what we learned. That makes sense? We were used to having the Y harness. Things moved differently. It shifted a different way. It was distributed a different way. Now we have this. The one downside for us was this right here. Check out the back. You got about 70% coverage. So being somewhere like 29 Palms or in the desert somewhere, those that were in the army over in Fort Irwin, okay, in California, um, 100 degrees, you're sweating. You're not venting. You're not releasing that steam off your body. This became saturated in sweat, became heavier, uncomfortable, chafing. It sucked. But guess what? We had to suck it up and deal with it. Um, Within a year, the enhanced LBE came out, or sorry, LBV, and what they'd done with that was they took the pouches, put them on the sides, because the same problem occurred. You're in the prone, on your stomach, trying to grab these mags, you had to roll to your side, now you've got a larger target trying to feed mags inside here. What we ended up doing was taking them out and shoving them into our cargo pocket, because it was just too much of a pain in the ass to get it back in here. So that's one reason why they went from the front to the sides, the back, also became mesh so you could breathe and i'll show you that system right here now this system was short-lived at the end of 99 beginning 2000 they tried to change it once again into the Molly system, the Molly 1, the Molly 2. 
all the way through what you guys have nowadays, okay? But this was the grandfather. This was your pre-Molly. This is where Molly came from. This was their first attempt. Um, love it, hate it. I only had it for about 18 months of my four and a half year enlistment. Um, when I got called back in after September 11th, um, they handed me Molly and I was like, what in the hell is this? It was the same thing, like deja vu. I'm like, what is this? Got plastic frames and this stuff's garbage. It's like, I don't want this, I don't want that. I'll take this, we'll take that. And they were like, they'll take them all. And I was like, you want the mag pouches right here around your chest area so I can just grab it, pick one out, put one back. I want my belt once again around my navel. Why? Because it's a military utility belt. I don't want to interfere with anything I'm wearing down here. I don't want to interfere with any knife I may have right here. Pouches, everything exactly the same. On the back, I want the butt pack hooked up. Again, I use two pins to go ahead and hook it to the top plastic clips, which would always break. It kind of distributes the weight a little bit better, keeps it a little bit higher versus bouncing off your butt. You don't want to do that. Looking at both these systems, here's which one I prefer. It depends on the situation. If I'm going scouting for the day, on a day hike, I'm off my property, I'm going somewhere where there might be other people, somebody else might see me on that state park trail or that camp area, I'm gonna go with the LBE harness first time every time. And here's why. I can simply take the mag pouches off and it's less tactical and more tactical. And people are less prone to be alarmed or what is he doing, where's he going? He's inserted himself in the woods. He's got mags in there, I know what he's doing. Unfortunately, that's how things are nowadays. People are going to look at that and say, oh, it's old school gear, who cares? Versus showing up in an LBV, whether the magazines are out of the pouches or not, the pouches are still there. It looks more tactical. It's night and day. You look at something like that second one, the LBV versus the LBE, it's a lot more tactical. And again, unfortunately, people become alarmed. They feel the need to follow you and see what you're doing because they want to make sure that you're staying safe. Um, on my own personal property, shooting ranges, things like that. Um, if I'm carrying a weapon, I'll probably default to the LBV. Um, now the second part of my answer is, if crap hit the fan tomorrow, which one would I take? Well, unfortunately for me, I'm gonna roll with the LBV, simply because I'm gonna have a weapon. And I want everybody to know, they see me, I'm not there to screw around. Okay, I'm not there to bushcraft. I'm there for other reasons. Or you see me, leave. That's just common sense, that's for me, that's who I am, and I want that image so that whoever I'm with, or whoever's with me, is protected. Um, but for everyday use, the harness, first time, every time. There's nothing wrong with that. And to be brutally honest, if I had to hit the road tomorrow and I had that with me, I'm trained with it, I'm comfortable with it, and I'd be okay with it. The last thing here real quick, the one upgrade I've chosen for all this old gear is this titanium canteen. This can be found on my Amazon affiliate page. The Amazon link is in my video description box. It's a deterrent for most. And here's why, the price, it's expensive. These things are 50 to 70 bucks and that's unfortunate. But because it's made out of titanium, that's the reason why. It's a wide mouth bottle and it's the only one that exists that will fit inside those old school pouches. Whoever came up with that new stainless steel wide mouth canteen, I, I question that because it's these are 32 ounces, that's a 34 and a half. And because it's 34 and a half, it will not fit in those pouches. You're forced to upgrade to a Molly pouch. And I don't want Molly pouches on my old school gear. Okay, I, I don't want it. And a lot of people don't either. So I have yet to see a company come out with an actual wide mouth canteen that's stainless that will fit in those pouches. Hasn't happened. Um, and it should, in my opinion. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, and to clear the air on stainless steel, the military was using stainless steel canteens back in 1940s, all the way through the 50s. They dabbled with aluminum for a little bit. Before Vietnam, they went back to stainless and they introduced the plastic right around that time frame as well to lighten the load. Um, so carrying a stainless steel bottle nowadays is nothing new. It was happening 70, 80 years ago. Um, is what it is. Um, but like I said, these are the only ones that are a wide mouth that will fit inside there. And that's unfortunate. This 
So there you go. You got two different systems that accomplished the same goal from the same era that both competed against each other. Um, and I've explained to you pros and cons of each and which I prefer. And here's the truth. I'm still partial to the Y harness LBE and that's my baby. Um, so you're going to see it in my videos all the time. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy store. Both links are found inside my description box. Now please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, and I'm going to catch you next time.